Welcome back to Vinny's Aquatics. First of all, I want to thank all you guys for all your support. And I'm going to say it again. We have the best community, I mean the best family on the internet by far. I love you all, my fishy friends. Each and every last one of you. So what's the topic for today? I'm thinking bubbles. No, not the chimpanzee bubbles. You know, that poor chimpanzee was probably looking at Michael going, well, what are you doing with your face, dude? Just stop it. Stop with the surgery. Oh, yeah. And stop messing around with the little kids, too. What? Too soon? <laughs> Whatever. No, nope, we're here to talk today about bubbles in our aquarium. Do we need them? What's the benefits? And what are the drawbacks? But real quick, let me give you a Vinny's Aquatics sneak preview. Here I am. I'm, we're out at my buddy Pete's. Uh, he's got a big pond in his backyard which obviously doesn't have any flow. But what we're doing now is I just figured we'll go out here and we'll try to uh, grab some of the natural plants off the top. I know there's some duckweed there and there's some really nice plants underneath. So we're gonna grab some, we're gonna throw them in a bucket, we're gonna bring them home, rinse them out and see what they do. But while doing this, my buddy Pete caught something that's in the bucket. I just noticed it. I'll tell you guys what it is. Can any of you guess? Leave your guesses in the comment down below. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go through bubbles in our aquarium. Do we need them? Why would we want them? What do they do? Let's get to it. Do me a favor. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button and smash the notification bell. Thank you. All right, strap yourselves in. I'm going to put on my grown-up voice, and we're going to get through this. Bubbles. Do we really need them? All right, calm down, Vinny. Okay, so just how necessary are those little bubbles that come out of the air stones or diffusers? A lot of people believe they play an important role in an aquarium when it comes to oxidization and aeration of the water. Boy, I'm going to stumble over some words in this one. And that this air source is critical, but that's not so. It's really not true. When it comes to the increase of DO, which is dissolved oxygen in the aquarium, the water surface is the main place where this exchange takes place. Oxygen is dissolved down in the water. Carbon dioxide is released out into the air. Not to mention that the other gases readily pass through the permeable surface of the water as well. This is the reason why, look, in taller tanks, you can't put as many fish or as much of a bio load in a taller tank as you can a wider one or a longer one because they don't have the same amount of uh, surface area. The surface area of the tank is where the gas exchange takes place. Most surface areas, the bigger, the, the easier breathing. Yes, breathing. You want your tank to breathe. I mean, seriously, have you ever seen bubbles in a pond? Like I just showed you, well, that pond had no moving water, so I don't know what to do, but it was a really big pond. But do you ever see bubbles in a pond? No, you don't. But what you do see, like if you watch Greg Whitstock or any of them pond guys, you see a waterfall, a fountain, a pump, something to agitate the surface of the water to enhance the gas exchange. You'll notice that, look, a lot of your modern power filters, your 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 uh, your HOBs, your canisters, um, all your power filters, they cascade or waterfall back into the tank, which is moving the surface of the water. They take suction from a lower area of the tank where the oxygen concentration is low and they pump it to the, to the top. This keeps the water at the surface fresh and new and that enables it to take on oxygen and to give up carbon dioxide and nitrogen. Hence, your tank is basically breathing. So if you take a look in the tank that I have on the screen, I mean, I have all the types of, basically all the types. I have a HOB, you can see in the right hand corner, there's a sponge filter. In the middle, there's another big sponge filter. I have a power head with a DIY polisher on it. Plus, I do have a bubbler in there. So this tank, pretty much, I can show you everything we're talking about. Now, even though HOBs and canister filters, they all come back into the tank and they create water agitation at the top. My favorite are power heads, all right? Now, power heads today, they have a director nozzle on them, and what you're supposed to do is point it slightly towards the surface of the tank so you can, you can get agitation on the surface. Now, some power heads have an attachment for an airline to mix bubbles into the discharge stream. It, this does two things. 
that makes a lot of noise and clouds the tanks or many a tiny bubbles. What you want to do is take that and throw it right in the garbage. Just throw it in the garbage. Thank you. I don't want that. So you're going to say, Vinny, Vinny, if the water surface area of the aquarium is where the main exchange of gases occurs, then why use an air stones and have bubbles in the aquarium at all? Oh, Vinny's going to tell you why. Now, the upside. The upside, number one, it's because the bubbles, they look cool. I, I got to admit myself, I love bubbles. I have bubbles in every one of my tanks. I'm not telling you not to have bubbles. I'm just telling you whether you need them or not. Now, the number two benefit, the benefit that I love the most is that they drive various types of filters and equipment, such as under gravel filters, some protein skimmers, and of course, my favorite, the sponge filter. I love sponge filters. And also tanks, if you have a solid cover or a really close fitted hood, they're candidates for stagnant air in low oxygen levels, high levels of carbon dioxide. So that'll help there. They're cheap and they're easy. And they definitely work with uh, under gravel filters. Also, I've come up with a design on a tank prototype that I'm gonna build that has the under gravel filter for this century. Not that old. This is going to be amazing. You guys are going to love this. I'm just working on designs right now, and I want to make nobody steals this million-dollar idea from me. <laughs> All right, now we're going to talk about the downside. Number one, it did definitely not as efficient as a powerhead, a water pump, a protein scammer, anything else. All of these are much better at helping with the oxygen and gas exchanges at the water service. They don't move water fast enough or... I guess an inadequate volume for what a tank usually needs for a good turnaround and especially vertical horizontal work uh, wow <laughs> i'm leaving that in water circulation this situation can also it also adds to an insufficient turnover rate when you're trying to get your tank to reach its peak performance level flow rate is important the power head is it's a much better choice if you ask me it has a rating that can be matched up with the square footage being used enabling efficient filtration rate which is about one to 1.5 gallons per minute per square foot that's the optimum now i personally like the fact with power is also that you can attach an actual sponge filter to the bottom of the power head to me that is amazing i love that i whoever did that whoever invented that send me an email because i want to give you a kiss that is, is the best way to do it for me. And you can control the flow. Another downside, is, especially if you have a saltwater aquarium, is it creates a lot of salt spray, which is, you get salt creep everywhere. But it's not that big a deal. Another thing, they clog up. And then when you go, you, you know, when you reach in, you go in to grab your old little little thing and you, you pull that little, little stone off of there, it just crumbles in your hand. And you just throw it away and get another one. But they are cheap. And the worst part is the, the air pumps, right? These air pumps, they hum, they buzz. I mean, the one in my basement, it, it's, it sounds like there's a, I don't know, it sounds like there's a, a, a friggin' power plant in, in any other room. It's so loud. It's so loud. But another update, I found a really good used pond pump that's double the size of the one I have now. It has an automatic shut off when it gets too hot. And this thing is quiet. Oh my God, it's quiet. <laughs> Remember, the top secret on our fish room, it's my bedroom. So I got to hear a hum and then water dripping all night. And yes, yes, the water dripping all night makes me feel like I have to pee. <laughs> too much information? I'm sorry, let me move on. But before I go any further, I'd be remiss if I didn't say you have to go check out Mary Page Flynn's YouTube channel. I I just met Mary three, four months ago, and I seen she's like I've known her my whole life. She is one of the greatest people that you're going to meet. Go check out her channel. Go subscribe and go support. I also got to thank another great person, Jen C., who helped me pick the uh, thumbnail for this video because I couldn't decide. An amazing person. I'm sure a lot of you know her. It's just a, just, I, I, I don't even have the words. So let's wrap this up with a nice little bow on top. What I'm saying is, if you like bubbles, go for it. 
But I'm going to say, if you're going to have an Airstone, why not put in a sponge filter? Maybe you don't like the aesthetic, you don't like the look. I understand that. Remember, these are your tanks. They're supposed to make you happy. All these other people, whatever. If they don't like it, who cares? I mean, really, who cares? Like me, I'm just a guy on the internet. But I don't mind seeing equipment in the back of my tanks. So I'll have a sponge filter, I'll have a power head, I have another sponge filter, I have a bubbler, I have an HOB. I'll invite everybody in the neighborhood. That's how I do it. But listen, like I said, these are your tanks. These are, these are your pride and joy. You do whatever you want, all right? You do you. That's what matters. And these people that judge a little too much, they need to calm down, okay? Just, just calm down. Stop being the, you're doing it all wrong guy, all right? Well, that tank's not big enough, or uh, enough, enough. Be, be positive. Why don't you give some creative criticism? Is that too hard to do? Or you just got to be like, Urgh! just stop it, right? Just stop it. This is why I want to hit a thousand subscribers. Yeah, and do me a favor, hit that friggin' subscribe button for Christ's sake. What are you doing? But once I hit a thousand subscribers, I want to do a live stream with all of you. All of you, because I cannot wait to have that conversation. It's going to be fun. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you think? Do you use an airstone? Do you use a power head? What do you do? How do you get agitation in the service of your aquariums? That's what I want to know. Give me a comment. Okay, you, you just got to see this. Listen, all you people with boats out there, when you gas up your boat, make sure you turn on the blower. Otherwise, you're going to end up like this lady. Which, I'm sorry, since I know she's okay, it's freaking hysterical. Watch this. Take a look. The blast sends a woman flying into the water after she was fueling the boat. Wow. You can see her husband and daughter also jump into the water at a port in southwestern Italy. Nobody, luckily, was... So that's it for bubbles in our aquarium. Do we need them or not? I hope you guys had a good time. Maybe some of you learned something. I'm pretty sure some of you already knew this. But thank you anyway. I love all you guys, like I said before. I can't wait to see you next time. I'm Finney's Aquatics. And hit the freaking subscription bell. Come on.